The world's weather could be about to worsen if reports are true that another El Nino is on its way. Events like this can cause floods, droughts and wildfires around the globe. And formerly of this parish and now delighted to be reunited with us, Dan Corbett, uh, who is forecasting New Zealand's weather with TVNZ, joins us to explain these reports to you. Dan, welcome back on Five Live. Thank you. It's good to talk to you. You all right? Yes, very well, thanks. Tell us about uh, El Nino. Is there another on its way? What's the evidence? Well, yes, uh, it is. Um, and it's actually funny. El Nino, they had a party for about six months ago and she literally didn't turn up because all it essentially is, it's the uh, warming of the Pacific Ocean. You think, well, what on earth does that have to do with people in the UK, the Pacific Ocean? But the Pacific Ocean is a massive body of water. And just like a big bathtub, if you had a typical bathtub with a little trickle of warm water, a couple of ice cubes, you stir it all around, you say, no, nah, that's our typical bathtub, it's OK. But if you all of a sudden took a big science Bunsen burner, stuck it underneath this thing and they just went on boom, full blast and you got all the steam rising the bathroom started to get misty and dew coming off the ceiling and the neighbors are banging on the door or something um it will change obviously the atmosphere and that's exactly what only knew is the warming of the waters particularly over the equatorial east and pacific throw more warmth more moisture into the atmosphere and that then changes um the steering or the uh, what we call the weather patterns and most importantly the jet stream so it provides more energy uh in the jet stream so that's why even downstream in the uk it can affect indirectly our weather but it's not like say tomorrow everyone's going to go to uh, work and say oh that rain was el nino it, it's more just the trend so what it could do is give more oomph in the jet stream over the north atlantic and that of course brings a lot of our weather systems so uh, and there's scenarios where they say well we could have a colder winter in the uk and other parts of the world could be colder or drier i think it's you don't focus on just the actual type of weather but it throws an, a spanner in the works and more extremes uh, could be hot could be cold and certainly more uh oomph into the the weather as it comes in the next sort of three to six months so how does all this sit with what's happening where you are which i'm told is called a southern hemisphere booster yeah, exactly. Well, it, it, it affects literally every part of the planet. You know, the Indian monsoon, it can affect that. Australia, they talk about always the, uh, the risk for dry and droughts there. That could happen in parts of Australia in the coming months. For us in New Zealand, because we've obviously got mountain uh, uh, ranges, we get more of a west-east bias where you've got a westerly to southwest wind flow. So western areas tend to do better for rainfall, but eastern areas tend to, uh, to be drier. And then downwind, you get to places like America, they can get more floods and mudslides in places like California. So it does its deal in many parts of the world, but it's the case of it does literally provide, like you say, that boost, almost that fuel, that uh, high-octane uh, fuel from the petrol station uh, into your car that really makes the weather just zing over the coming months, potentially. When will we know? When do we get more evidence of its impact? Is it literally when it happens, or are there any pointers that we'll see in the run-up to perhaps, say, a colder winter in the UK? Well, the, the waters have been warming over the Pacific literally since um, uh, what was last winter in the UK. But you need the two pieces. You just to warm the bathtub or the, the Pacific waters, but you also need the atmosphere to see the warming and that steam rising, so to speak, to then connect and grow the clouds. It's what we call coupling of the atmosphere. That has started to happen, and the important trade winds over the equatorial Pacific that normally flow from east uh, to west, they reverse, and they actually help carry this cloud and moisture further east and then just enhance the jet stream. That is starting to happen, and if you remember as well, we've been also in the world where they're talking about um, uh, typhoons. There's been a nasty one. There's another one in the Central Pacific, very early for the time of year and very powerful because of that warm water. Uh, there was a very early um, uh, tropical storm in America. So all of these things, you know, you can't con connect the dots exactly and say, ah, oh, that was that. But it's these trends or the more extremes in the weather, which we'll certainly be seeing in the coming months. Dan, thank you for joining us. Great to have you back on. A uh, few of your big fans in the office wonder whether you'll be able to do your traditional weather sign-off. <laughs> well, Phil, as you know, that's the weather for now. Hey! You've made a lot of people very happy. Dan, take care. Dan Corbett, <laughs> formerly of the parish, who is now doing New Zealand's weather on TVNZ.